Alrighty, so this is my attempted proof of the Colatz conjecture, and I'm just going to jump right into it. So the Colatz conjecture states as this process of function, so if n is even, uh, n mod 2 equals 0, I'm going to write the modulus as a percentage sign. That's what we do in uh, JavaScript. Uh, so if n is even, we divide it by 2. If n is odd, we multiply it by 3 and add 1. And the Colatz conjecture is that if we keep Doing this process will eventually get to one for all positive integers. So one thing we can do is make a tree such as this. Um, and we can see a couple of things about this tree. This tree would be you start at a number and then you iterate downward and it shows all numbers leading to one. Um, one thing we can notice about this tree is, for instance, we have all square numbers over here and we can see that all odd numbers produce an infinite vine of even numbers. So we can see that it's pretty trivial for to see how an even number is connected to the tree because we just keep dividing by two and we'll eventually get to an odd number. Um, another thing we can notice is that if the starting node is three, um, no other odd numbers will branch from it, right? Because if we're if we think about Colette's, uh in reverse, uh, we take an even number, subtract one, and divide it by three. But if this even number is already a multiple of three, then subtracting one, it'll never be divisible by three, right? So that's one thing to notice. So anyway, all the even numbers are trivial; they all get to odd numbers. So our real, what we're really interested in is the connections between the odd numbers. So if we take out all the even numbers, we get a tree like this, and we can see, interesting thing we can see about this, considering what we just talked about with um, multiples of three, is that if n is divisible by three, it'll have no children. If n is not divisible by three, it will actually have infinite children. So here we have one, obviously it goes on, one goes to five, 21, 85, 341, five will have, so all numbers that are all odd numbers will have infinite children or no children. All right. So this is kind of annoying because how are we going to do infinite children? That's annoying. So let's actually change this tree up and we're going to define a variant of the collats. Um, and we'll define a variant of Colette's like this. Let's look at the, we're going to look at three types of odd numbers. All right, so the first one would be, for instance, the connection between three and five. And so if you see what we do, we iterate through Colette's uh, once through here to get 10, and then through here to get five. So that would be, 3 and plus 1 divided by 2, right? We combine the steps to get from 3 to 5. So that's one type of odd number. You can see another type of odd number is such as 17 to 13, where we 17 iterate through colats like an odd number, and then we divide and divide, so we divide twice. So we, it's similar to this, except we're going down twice. So 3, uh, three in plus 1 divided by 4, right? And so we're going to think of a third type of connection um, that will hopefully help us get rid of these infinite children, which is annoying. So um, an example of that would be 13 to 3. Basically, we're going to connect instead of, if you look at this tree, instead of connecting 5, 21, 85, 3, 41, instead of connecting all of them to 1, we'll only connect the 5 to 1, and we'll connect the 21 to 5 instead, and we'll connect the 85 to 21, the 341 to 85, and so on. And so, if something like this, how would we get from 21 to 5? So we, we know that the relationship from 21 to 16 is similar to 17 to 13, that is 3x plus 1 divided by 4, and then to get 16 from 5, we just iterate uh, backwards through colats, right? 
So 16 minus 1 is 15 divided by 3 equals 5. So when we combine those together, we get n minus 1 divided by 4. So the function for our Colat's variant would be this. Um, and I didn't really explain these, but just do the math yourself. <laughs> so n minus 1 divided by 4, if n modulus 4 is equal to 1, and the modulus of 8 is equal to 5, basically we're splitting the numbers, the odd numbers that are modulo 4 into two groups. Uh, one with modulo 8, 1, one with modulo 8, 5. Um, 3n plus 1 divided by 4, if that, and then 3n plus 1 divided by 2, if n modulo 4 is 3. Um, and when we do this, we get a tree like this. It looks a little prettier. I mean, it's symmetric, it's, right? So it's not like all over the place, like it's, it's balanced. But of course, the odd numbers still seem to be all over the place. The real annoying thing is especially this 3 in plus 1 divided by 2, because if you think about when we plug in a number in, it's uh, 3 in plus 2, sorry, 3 in plus 1 divided by 2, that always gives us a bigger number. So we're iterating down, for instance, 11, and then we get 17, which is weird, or 35, 53. 3, 5, 75, 113. So how do we prove, basically what we're trying to do with this proof is prove that all odd numbers lead to 1, right? And if we can prove it with this variant tree, then it will of course be true for the odd only tree, and of course be true for the Colette's conjecture itself. So we've got to prove that given these odd numbers, the connections between these odd numbers, that this will always lead to 1. And if it was just these two, it'd be pretty easy, right? Because n would always shrink, and it could never shrink beyond 1, so it'd be simple. But this kind of messes everything up. But what we can do, very simple, we can create a, a simpler tree for which this does not grow, and then we can instantly see this is our simple tree. Um, and here we have, we don't have any coefficients on n, so it's much easier, and we know n minus 1 divided by 2 will always be uh, less than the n. So here, if we define a tree like this, it should be pretty easy to see that all odd numbers would go to 1, right? Because for every iteration, n, the new value of n must shrink, and it cannot shrink beyond 1, so all odd numbers lead to 1. And we get something like this. It's a, uh, what do you call it, like a ternary tree? Of course, that's ignoring that 1 would actually um, loop on itself, but we're not really concerned with that. Um, so that would create these, and we can see that it always increases, right? The order is still a bit tricky, right? We have 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 11's over here, 13, and then 15's up here, 17, 19, 21, um, 23. So it's still, kind of, it's still kind of mixed up, but you can see that there's very clearly an order. Um, and you can probably guess how we can go from this simple tree to proving the conjecture, because if we take this tree... And we say take a node, such as 3, and we take out this connection from 3, for instance. Because we know that in our Colette's... Where did I put my Colette's uh, not only variant? We can see that 3 is connected to 5, right? So, if we take this connection... and reattach it to 5 instead, we know that everything here will still go to 1, right? So if we take a node and reconnect it to another node, we know it'll still reach 1. The only thing we can't do is, of course, reconnect it to one of its children, because then it would be detached from the tree, and it would create a loop. 
So all we have to do is show that when we reconnect all the odd numbers in our simple tree, according to the Colette's odd only variant that we created, then all odd numbers would lead to one. So if you look here, creating mess. So we have our simple tree and our Colette's odd only variant. If I can get this focus to focus again, focus, focus. Um, we can see that this one is actually the same. So we don't even have to worry about that one, that one. Um, so we can do this next, basically all the numbers for which uh, modulo four is equal to one and modulo eight is equal to one and plus three to four. We're going to re uh, detach them and reattach them according to three and plus one divided by four. And the only thing we have to make sure is that we are not reconnecting to any of our children, but that's actually pretty easy to know because what is three in plus one divided by four? It's always going to be less than in, right? So whatever numbers we attach, and I don't even remember what numbers those are, um, would three be one of them? No, because modulo four, not, I think nine would be one of them, right? Modulo eight, one. Yeah. Okay. So nine times three plus one is 28 divided by four equals seven. So we're going to put the nine to seven. Anyway, we know nine is greater than seven. So we know whatever three in plus one divided by four is, we know we will not be reconnecting it to any of our children, right? So we can do, we can reconnect nine to seven. And it's, it still holds true that all odd numbers would reach one. So simple tree, we can easily change that to three in plus one divided by four. If these conditions the same, and we know that all of these will eventually lead to one. The trickier part is this last one. We have to get that to be three in plus one divided by two. And we have to show that that will not connect to any of its children. And it's even, even a little trickier because as we're doing that, we may, uh, you know, already have for, for instance, we're going to reconnect seven, right? According to, 3 in plus 1 divided by 2, so that's 21 plus 1, 22 divided by 2 equals 11. So we're going to reattach 7 to 11. And this is actually where the gas station gets its name. It's from the Colette's conjecture. It's pretty cool. Um, so, seven, so 11 is greater than 7. That's a mess. Um, so now when we're, when we're, uh, when we continue to shuffle according to, uh, according to this new rule, and when we're going to reattach 11 to 17, I think, uh, we have to make sure that 17 is not one of our children, and we already have a number that's less than 11 as one of our children, so that is a concern. So, how do we know that when we reconnect n minus one divided by two to three n plus one divided by two. How do we know it'll never be a child? And to do that, we can act. It's actually pretty easy. Not quite as easy as comparing the values, but it's actually still not that hard because we can just go in reverse. We know that the children of any n will have the inverse of one of these equations. Um, or the inverse of that. So what does that give us? In minus one would be four in plus one would be one of them. Um, and then this times four minus one divided by three. Uh, in minus one divided by two. So two in plus one. Hmm. 
write it over there. Uh, and then what is our last one? The last one, it could possibly be this if, if we've already done some reattaching. So that would be what? Two in minus one divided by three. So if given any node that we're reattaching, all of its children will be of this form. Now it might be a composite of one of these formulas. That is, we might apply one, one to another to get the grandchildren, right? But all we have to be sure of is that whatever we get over here, um, will not be equal to And you can probably see that that, you know, how could any combination of these ever be equal to 3 and plus 1 divided by 2? Even though 3 and plus 1 divided by 2 is going to be bigger for any given n, it still can't, uh, how could it ever equal one of these? Whenever we, even if we do a composite of these, the denominators over here will always be a power of 3, and the coefficient of n will always be a power of 2. So there's no way we could ever get three and plus one as one of our children or grandchildren. So we know that when we reattach n minus one divided by two to three n plus one divided by two, that it will never be a child. And therefore, of course, hopefully that makes sense, right? You can see that even with these two shuffles, I never rewrote this one. So we shuffled that, and then we shuffle this, and we know that when we reshuffle it, we're not reshuffling to any of our children. And because we know that our original simple odd tree, all the odd numbers, went to 1, now we know that they all go to 1 in our colats odd-only variant as well, which means they all go to 1 in the original colats tree. And thus, it is proven. At least I hope so, unless I'm missing something. But that's my attempted proof. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think.